Hello and welcome to the second episode of Restoration Quick Tips. Let's say you're working on a medium-sized or a huge project, something that involves more than a single operator. You will probably be working in something that's called generation. Generation will be something like splitting the different process of a project or of a read in different parts. So they can be addressed separately. And I'm going to show you how I usually do it in Phoenix. And beginning January, SimpleWD became public domain. So we're going to work with that. This is a positive print that was easily found online. It's available on the archive.org. I'm going to share the link on the description of the video. The original file is, um, yeah, it's quite dirty. This is a exhibition print. Yeah, it's quite dirty. A lot of flicker. Has a lot of wear because you notice a lot of the scratches that are probably because a lot of the runs was really popular back when it was released. It's also a optical track on the right side mono track it's really dirty no not really something that you will like to hear but it's there i'm gonna show you this but this is probably gonna be a cooking show so as a cooking show everything's gonna be already made some mistakes in the back this is the original file with the audio and this is two versions that i already did one it's the generation that has the steady flicker the other one has the clean that's usually a dry clean and a scratch removal pass and the last one is a fix that usually comes with the noise or grain reduction and the manual fixes or the manual cleaner we're going to start with the original i'm going to show you regarding stabilization we can either stabilize the content because as you can see this is a print so one of the generations may have damage the movement, the original movement that was intended. The first one that's going to be based on the frames is using a DBO frame log. And the most important step that I did here is going to be a DBO flicker. As you've seen, there's a lot of flicker. I'm going to show you the original again. So if you see the luma here, you're going to show that the fluctuation is quite big. It's moving all around and the luminosity is not really stable. So the main thing that we need to do here, besides the stabilization, is going to be the flicker. So that's going to be the, the main goal in this generation is going to be doing the stabilization and doing the flicker. So those are our goals. We are not dealing with any dust. We are not dealing with any grain. We are not dealing with any other problem that is not stabilization and flicker. We're going to stabilize the pixel locations and we're going to stabilize the luminosity values. So those things we're going to do first. We're going to do here with the frame lock. Uh, it's going to be the first one. Yeah, it's doing a decent job, but as you may realize, and as I've told you before, we are only using the frame. So if the content is moving because of a bad print or damage or anything that could be related to that, we're probably not going to see that. But what we're going to see here is the effects of the difference. I've done my best to avoid any type of ghosting, yet you can see due to the damage, present in the original picture, we cannot avoid all of the motion artifacts that come with such a string the flick. When Mickey is moving his hand, yeah, you can see like a white glow following him. If you see the original, it's there, but it's not quite noticeable. But when the Luma is stabilized, you can see here more clearly. But still, this is not the worst case of a motion artifact in the flick. This is quite a light. Uh, let's do a quick comparison with the original. A dual comparison will be best. Yeah, you can see the flicker is quite jarring, even in these frames that had a sudden change of luminosity, that the flicker does a perfect job trying to match those two. So, let's say we are happy with the results that we have. Well, this is as far as we can get this the flicker without introducing more motion artifacts. We render this generation. And then we start working on the second one, the second generation being the clean pass. So in the clean pass, what I'm going to do is going to do some scratch removal. I'm going to try to remove as much of the scratching as possible. And I'm going to do a dry clean, try to, try to remove the dust and any type of stains, anything that you can see on the picture here. As I told you, this is a cooking show. I already have the results here. Most of the scratches have been eliminated, but I couldn't completely remove some of them because as you may see, we have some features that could be misinterpreted as a line, as a vertical artifact. These lines could be misinterpreted as a scratch. So if you are way too aggressive with your scratch removal, these lines could be removed as well. And also we have to do some manual recovering in the case of these 
type of features that are eliminated by the dry cleaning. But these are easy to fix. So let's finish the rendering here. I wouldn't say it's completely clean, but yeah, it's an advance. We're going to see a comparison as well here. As you can see as well, we have some things that we need to recover, some features that need recovery. We're going to do that in a bit. We're just going to wait to see the render. It's going to be easier for us to, to see the whole picture and then we can do the recovery. This is a almost 4K scan. It's not really that, it's 3400 by 2050p. So it's more than 2K, not yet 4K, but yeah, it's quite a big scan. So we're gonna work with this. It's gonna take a bit more of processing power. And that's also a reason that I do this type of generation. Putting aside the organizational value of doing a generation, you do this because you want to make the most of the resources available to you. So you wanna be as efficient as possible with the resources that you have, with the CPU and the GPU and the memory that you have. Okay, so we have the result here. I mean, it's mostly okay. Let's do a um, red comparison with the original to see what artifacts we have to recover. When Mickey is moving, we have something here. I mean, yeah, this is a lot. Yeah, I think we have something here that we may need to recover. With TC, you know how to recover uh, things using dry cream. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but we just need to go here to matte paint inside the dry clean effect and then we paint things back just need to do this whenever i need to a good guide is to have the red comparison mode and we can see whatever the the filter has done and yeah we just need to recover whenever the filter tells us that there's something missing a neat trick will be if you go here to set up on the lower right of the UI, you can see here on Viewer that we can set up and compare different thresholds. We can increase or decrease that depending on how much information we want to see. Right now, around 40 is quite high. We can go to 20, so we can see more. We can go to the original, it's 5. But when you go to 5, you start seeing grain and some minor artifacts that you don't really see with the naked eye. So this is going to be something that you will need to set in a shot by shot or even a reel by reel basis. So in this particular case, I'm okay working at 20 or even 25, 30, I would say. I just don't wanna see those small dots because I don't really want to recover those. I mean, this also depends on how much time you have for your recovery or how much time you, you have for your restoration. So you may want to decrease this threshold when you're working in, I would say, a higher quality restoration that need a more specialized restoration procedures you have a better result maybe if you want to recover every single pixel that could be eliminated sometimes it's not possible because the damage is way too much but you make a compromise especially when you're doing restoration you make a compromise between time and money between the operator's time between a lot of variables that you need to balance keep continuing with 40 because it's giving me correct results let's keep finding any type of big artifact when mickey is here yeah you can see there is some heavy movement and a lot of things have been erased so we need to do this and this is an example when you are doing this in a proper job you may do this with a bit more calm also if you notice i overdid some of the settings here in, in drag game because i wanted to get rid of as much as possible of the dust so you may wanna dial back on some of the settings but i think it's mostly okay you just need to be sure of that but let's say we have finished or let's say we have done already a pass and we are ready so let's say we render this and i'm gonna render this so one thing that you're gonna notice right here is that if i'm rendering something and I want to overwrite the same file that is being used in another composition. If I'm doing that with an MOV file, MXF, whatever it's a video container, Clone is not gonna let me, it's gonna tell me that the video file is in use. But if I do the same thing with a file sequence, there's not gonna be any issue. And every single frame is gonna be rewritten and I can relink back to it without doing anything. So it's gonna be an automatic conformance. So that's a very powerful tool for us because we don't have to do any conforming at all. So I'm gonna export these to the same place. As you notice, I've done some keywords 
If you want to know the exact keywords we have a uh, legend it's going to be available on the keyboard shortcuts the one that i'm using right now is dollar sign and o that's original source name and then i do a name and the name i do a underscore and then the frame count starts every time that i do a generation i do something like that in order for me to keep track of the generation so it's going to be the original name of the file here then it's going to be whatever process that I did, steady, flicker, clean, and then the next one is going to be fix, and then color, whatever you're going to do in the order that you want to do it. So I'm going to render this right now. It's going to be really fast because I already have it pre-rendered here on the comp. As the file is doing this, I can just go to the next one, and since everything is related, I don't have to do anything. If we have something in the cache here, we just need to delete the cache in this particular clip. We just select the clip here, and then go to cache and clean up the cache in that particular clip or that particular section and now everything is going back to the origin this final generation is going to be the fixed generation the fixed generation is my last generation where i do the manual cleanup where i do the noise reduction and when i do any specialized process that needs me to be as careful as possible maybe using dbo frame maybe using some type of bang scan in order for me to try to match between two cuts Anything that needs more care, needs more time, is going to be in the final generation. But this final generation is something that I always come back to. Because when I'm doing the DBO fix, when I'm doing the manual cleanup, what I'm going to do is, obviously, I can see the whole picture like this. I can find some dust here and there. Problem is that most of the time, my eyes are not going to be focused on the whole picture. So maybe the things at the center is going to be more clean than the things on the side. But if I want to be more thorough with my cleaning, what I can do is separate the image in quarters and then work each quarter at a time. We just need to press zero on the numpad and then I'm going to be taken to the first quarter is going to be the top left one then zero again is going to be the top right one zero again it's going to be the bottom left bottom right let's go back to the top left and then i press play and then i can see more closely what i need to clean and where i need to clean it sometimes dbo fix is going to do a better job sometimes it's going to be dbo out of clone it's a shot by shot basis you can be as careful as you want. You can do this however you want it. And let's say I finish with this generation, I come back here, and then I do it again here. These are kind of stretches. Yeah, but maybe I'm killing some of the features. No, I think it's okay. So the idea is going that way. This is not a class of manual restoration, but you know the dream. So in the end, we have something like this. It really depends on the creator if you want this quality to be the last one. Maybe the creator wants stability to be as steady as possible. And for me to do that, I will need to go back to the original generation. Let's say I go back here to the steady generation. And instead of using frame lock, I'm going to use a steady. And that steady is going to be using the center frame. Okay, let me check. I have this kind of artifact because I am doing some routing here on the blur in order for me to recover a specific part of the shot. Wait, please, and we might have it. Okay, that should be enough for it to be reset. It's gonna take a bit more for it to render because it's steady, especially when you are using any type of modifier, it's gonna take more processing power. So this is one of the heavier effects especially when you want to do a lot of things at the same time. I already have it here so I'm going to render it as as possible. For me to select an in and out point is going to be the same as in any NLE, any modern NLE, it's going to be I and O. So I'm going to render this very quick and I just need to go here, choose the place. I want to go to steady flicker and I want it to go here to dollar sign O, steady, and it's gonna replace only that part in that particular subject with this name that I'm creating here. It's gonna tell me that the sequence already exists and if I wanna overwrite it, I'm gonna say yes, the program is gonna let me do that because it's replacing each one of the frames one at a time. So it doesn't have any conflicts and it doesn't have to 
rebuild the database. It doesn't have to do anything like when you're using some type of contain like a MOV video or MXF. So it's way, way faster for you to do this type of fix. If you want to see exactly how long a render is going to take, just go to library and library you go to tasks. This is going to be the task manager and the task manager indicates what jobs are currently running and what speed it's running. This particular render is running at 1.49, 1.50 FPS and we have about 219 frames remaining. Good thing here is we can queue different processes. Let's say I'm rendering this steady plus flicker, but also what I want to do is this. I want to go to dry clean. I want to go to my clean composition. I want to delete this cache because it's going to be replaced because I'm replacing all the effects. I'm going to replace this and I can also queue the render output of this file. So I just press Alt R and it's going to start rendering this but it's going to place it in the queue. Instead of rendering the output, what I'm going to do is do a pre-render using RR and from that I'm going to do an export. Here we have the render output is going to finish first. That's going to be a render to the cache, to the internal cache and to the SSD cache. And then when it has finished that, it's going to start doing the export. The advantage of doing this workflow in this particular order is going to be that I'm going to have a render output that's going to let me do a quick inspection on real time of the layer stack that I made. And then if I need to fix a single frame or whatever, I just can do that. And since I already done the render output, the render is going to take way less time because it's just going to take the render output and it's going to place it in another container. So it's going to be way faster. So we're just going to wait here. And we can queue more things at the same time. If you are a bit worried about the capabilities of your machine or you want to be as careful as possible, you can suspend all of the render outputs until you know exactly what is the order of your queue. So I, I just suspended with the render output. I'm going to go to the dry clean and I'm going to delete this cache and do I render output of this particular place here and now we just click suspend again so the queue is back on track. So we have now the footage pre-render. Let's see what's the difference between this and the original version that we did with only the frame log and the stabilization based on the frame. I'm going to show you the original. The edges of the frame are moving, you can see it here, especially here on this, on this edge. Yeah, you can see it. the frame is moving, but now the content is steady. So this may be another way that you may want to do this kind of shot. I wouldn't say either one is the correct way. It depends on the creator, depends on the job. The reason that I'm doing this is that I can come back and retain most of my settings, just changing whatever I want, because I can go back to a generation. That's my main goal. So you will say, why do I need to do another render? because it's going to be faster, it's going to take better advantage of your resources, especially your machine resources. So let's see the result. Since the stabilization is a bit better, I probably have to recover less. Let's do a quick pickup. Yeah, the problem here is going to be always the wheel. So we may need to recover as much as possible from the wheel. Yeah, but the wheel is going to be quite easy, you just know What's there? Let's do it fast so you can see a proper result and not judge me by my lack of care. Okay. Okay. As you always notice, I'm always using a tablet display or print display because it's easier for me to identify what I need to paint, what do I need to recover. It's going to be way easier on your hand, on your wrist, Probably because this is not going to be like using a mouse and you will end up with some kind of problem with your wrist, carpian tunnel and the like. So, let's do it here. Yeah, you could do some masking, but I prefer doing this with painting because painting is more exact. Masks are always like doing roto. 
rotoscoping. I mean, you can do it if you really like rotoscoping, but for me, it's not really worth it, especially in restoration. But I'm not the sole judge of what you can or can do with restoration, so you, you do you. But I prefer painting. It feels better. Also, I have way more control. Especially if I can do this and zoom in and get into the, the shot. This is not gonna take a lot. I think only the show is remaining. We have another wheel. How many wheels we have? Okay, maybe we have like three or four. Well, you get the idea. We may need to recover all of them. But let's say we are happy. We are happy with our recovery. We are happy of whatever the dry clean did here. And we just render this. This is gonna be my clean pass. I'm gonna render it again. And then as always, I go to the next generation. It's gonna be the fifth generation, the one that's doing the automatic cleanup. I'm gonna erase the cache because I don't need it anymore. In render selectively. I'm gonna do a fast output render because I want the clarity to be running in real time. Let's just check how long it's gonna take. This is gonna be fast. Yeah, the render has already stopped and we are just doing the output rendering. So here we're gonna do some cleanup. Let's see what we can find. Maybe some dust here and there. Here we can find something like this and then we can do... I'm gonna disable green now like green here. This maybe going a bit like doing the quarters things that I told you before. It's gonna work better maybe here. And this wasn't an artifact, this was probably a feature. Especially in cartoons, it's very hard for us to determine exactly what is and what isn't a feature. In this particular shot, I need to go back to the previous version and recover this file. I'm gonna do this pretty quick. It's 17 and 10 is gonna be the time code. Let's do it fast, so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Let's go to 17 and 10. It's gonna be here. I'm gonna go to dry clean, matte paint, and then recover whatever I have lost. Let's go frame forward, frame backward, another frame backward. Let's say I'm happy with that result. So I just need to re-render those frames. This frame is going to be an I here. One, two, three, four. These five frames I'm going to re-render. Only this. Don't need to re-render the whole shot. I'm going to go out to fix. And I can delete the cache in current frame or in current region, the mark region. So I'm going to delete here in this region from here here. I'm gonna delete the cache in here. Go back to fix and you're gonna see that you can see it here. It has come back. The fix that we made in the dry clean, the recovery that we made in dry clean is now in this generation. So this is the idea. And you can go back whatever you want. But the idea is you have control over all your layers or all of the processes in this particular restoration. So this is kind of neat. For me, it saves time, it makes you more organized, and it helps you. Let's say you are not doing this as a solo artist. Let's say somebody else is helping you with this. Maybe somebody is doing a reel, maybe you know, for that. The idea here is that if someone else is doing this and you need to do some quality control, or you need to do some checks, you want to see how is he doing, how is she doing with the cleanup, you can know exactly what he or she is supposed to be doing in that particular composition. So there is these particular sets of layers that need to be in this generation. So for me, it works really good. I can have an assistant that helps me with the recovery, maybe. And then I do the manual cleanup. Maybe I can have an assistant that helps me with the manual cleanup and I do the recovery. The idea is I have these compositions in different places. And as you know, Phoenix has a database, a SQL database. So this can be shared in a local environment just connecting every single Phoenix client to the same database. Let's do a quick checkup. 
for the final output. Here in the track 2, I have the fix that I'm doing. In the track 1, I have the original file. So I'm going to compare, a dual compare with the track 1. It's going to be the original. So you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Let's do a zoom in. Yeah, you can see the difference is quite jarring, right? We still have some cleanup that we need to be doing. Something like here. Let's do it fast. But for the most part, I think it's pretty much, it's way better than it was originally. Obviously, you may want to deal with more of the flicker. Really depends if you want to deal with the flicker a lot more. You want to be more aggressive. I don't think you can be that aggressive when working with cartoons, especially since some of the issues with cartoons is that there are some places where the interpolation between frames can be really jarring. So you need to be aware of that, especially if you're using any type of motion artifact or motion filter like this. But this is the idea. We have the original here. So this is my approach to working in generations here in Phoenix. I wouldn't call it perfect, but works for me and it helps me be more organized with my restoration. I'm going to share the files, maybe the project, because this is public domain. Um, the file is readily available online or you can practice at home. So see you next time.